Hi there, my name's Chris Winter, and in this video, I'm going to go through some of the best lenses for the brand new Canon SL2 or 200D. So hopefully I can tell you which ones might be good for you and which ones you should invest your hard earned money in. And guys, if you haven't seen it yet, definitely make sure to check out my brand new list. The top five must have lenses for the Canon SL2 or 200D. In that list, I go through some of the best lenses for you and your brand new camera. So if you want to check that one out, I'll put a link in the description box below under this video. But anyway, let's take a look at some of these lenses and decide on which ones might be right for you. So one of the best things about having a DSLR is that you can actually change the lenses. And this is different compared to cameras like point and shoots and compact cameras, because they have their lenses built in. So to my right here, I've got a number of different lenses that I think might be good for you. So the very first lens that you're probably gonna be getting when you buy your Canon SL2 or 200D is the kit lens. Now, this is a lens that often comes in a kit, that's why it's called a kit lens, and normally it's the 18 to 55 millimeter uh, STM. Now, I've got one right here and I've got one here on the camera as well, and this is actually a really good all-purpose lens. One of the great things about this lens is that it's really lightweight and it's really easy to carry with you. Now it starts out at 18 millimeters, which is actually probably about what you're seeing right now, and zooms in all the way to 55 millimeters. Now, this isn't a super zoomed in lens, but if you do need to have that extra little bit of zoom range, it can be a really good thing. And the other great thing about this lens is that it's an STM lens, which means that it's got a stepper motor and it's really good in autofocus for video. Now, as you guys probably know, the Canon SL2 does have that new dual pixel autofocus system. And when you pair it up with an STM lens, which is specifically designed to work with this system, you're gonna be getting some really great autofocus. So the 18 to 55 millimeter lens, although it's cheap and although it's relatively plasticky, it is a good starting lens and it's one that I like for beginners. Next up to the side is one of my all time favorite lenses from Canon. It's this one right here, the 18 to 135 STM. Now I've owned this lens for probably four or five years now and it's been probably my all time favorite all around lens for pretty much all cameras. Now, this is an 18 to 135 compared to the 18 to 55 that I was talking about before. And essentially what that means, it can go just as wide as the 18 to 55, but it can zoom in all the way to 135 millimeters, which on a crop sensitive camera, which is the Canon SL2, is really quite far. You can get some really good telephoto shots with this lens. Now, it is a little bit bigger than the 18 to 55. In fact, it's quite a lot bigger, but it's not super heavy. And again, it does have that STM uh, motor in it, so it does mean we're gonna be getting some really good autofocus. In fact, I think this has got the best autofocus uh, that works with the Canon SL2 that I've found. So if you're gonna be traveling and you, you wanna be able to get some wide shots of say some architecture and some uh, group photos and things like that, but you also wanna get some nice zoomed in shots, say you're at a zoo or uh, you wanna even get some sort of kind of semi-portrait shots, you can use this because you can go 18, you can go 50 millimeters, you can go 85, or you can go really long and go 135, which could be good for some outdoor sports as well. So this is definitely one of the lenses that I recommend for a lot of people, especially if you're starting out and you want an all-in-one lens, this is a great option. So further to my right is this lens right here. This is the Canon 10 to 18 millimeter STM. Now this is an ultra wide angle lens, which uh, goes a lot wider than these two lenses that I previously spoke about. Now, 10 to 18 millimeters might not sound like a long zoom range, which in comparison, it really isn't that long. But being able to shoot at 10 millimeters is amazing. So I'm in quite a small room right now, and uh, even with this lens, which I'm shooting with, which is an 18 to 35, uh, it's not really possible to get the whole room in the shot. With a 10 millimeter lens, you can easily get the whole shot in. And this is what a lot of real estate people will use for their shots because it makes even the smallest rooms look really big, uh, really grand, and it's a really cool shot uh, for real estate shots. It's also good for architecture and when you really need to get uh, some buildings in your shot. And it's also good for things like skateboarding and pretty much anything where you need to get that kind of uh, wide angle shot. Now, I wouldn't be using this generally for things like portraits because if you have a really wide angle shot, it can make noses and faces look a little bit funny. Uh, but it's good to have this lens in your bag. It's probably not the lens I would go for straight away, but if you do know that you wanna uh, work with wide angles and you wanna start doing some architecture shots or some real estate shots, this can be a really uh, nice lens to have. And again, we've got that STM motor on this one as well. So autofocus is really quiet, really quick, and really nice. Okay, so next up, we're gonna be moving to prime lenses. And if you're new to photography, you might not know what a prime lens is. Well, the easiest way I can say it is, 
These ones here are zoom lenses, these are prime lenses, and prime lenses mean that they don't have a, a zoom built into them, they're one fixed focal length. So rather than it being an 18 to 35, it's just gonna be a 35 or a 50 or an 85. Now, why would you wanna have a prime lens? Well, uh, of course it might be nice to have the zoom normally, but a prime lens often uh, will have a fast aperture, which means you can get a lot more light into the shot or you might be able to get more of that kind of black background blur or what we call bokeh. So I've got a number of different lenses right here. Uh, the first one, which is probably the most common for beginners, is this right here. This is the 50 millimeter f1.8, or more commonly known as a nifty 50. Now, it's called a nifty 50 because it's actually really cheap. You can pick up these lenses for around about $100, or if you go for an off-brand like this one, this is called Yongnuo. This one here is only $50 for a 50 millimeter 1.8. If you pair this up with your Canon SL2, you're gonna be getting a, an equivalent focal length of around about 82 millimeters. And it's gonna give you a really good kind of length for portrait shots. And if you pair that up with the F1.8 aperture that it's got, you can get a really nice background blur. So I do quite like this lens. It is quite flimsy, but for 50 to $100, this is a good lens to start off with. Now, if you are using uh, the 50 millimeter F1.8, you might find that when you're shooting indoors that that might be a little bit too zoomed in for you. So a lens that I actually like to use is this one right here. This is a 35 millimeter F2. Now, it's got a slightly slower aperture of F2, but being 35 millimeters means you can use it generally indoors uh, and still get some really nice portrait shots. This is a roughly equivalent of a 50 millimeter on a full frame uh, body, and this is one of my favorite lenses to be shooting with. Again, this is a really cheap lens, about $150, but having that 35 millimeter uh, focal length and having that F2 aperture, this can be great for some indoor portraits or if you're at a party or something like that, it's a really nice focal length to work with. But if you know that you're gonna be outdoors and you're gonna be wanting to get some really good portrait shots, I'd highly recommend this lens. Again, this one here is an 85 millimeter F1.8, which is a pretty much a dedicated portrait lens. So 85 millimeters on an SL2 is quite zoomed in. And if you do have the F1.8 aperture with this one, you can see that it's got a really uh, a large opening. You can get some really nice uh, blurry background pictures. You can get a lot of bokeh and it really does make for some stunning portrait shots. This is definitely one of my favorite lenses. Again, it's not super practical in day-to-day -day use, but if you know you wanna get those beautiful kind of mystic uh, portrait shots, this is a lovely lens to use, the 85 millimeter F 1.8. So they were just a number of different lenses that I think you guys should definitely check out if you're just getting into the world of using a DSLR. And guys, if you haven't seen it yet, definitely make sure to check out my brand new list, the top five must have lenses for the Canon SL2 or 200D. In that list, I go through some of the best lenses for you and your brand new camera. So if you wanna check that one out, I'll put a link in the description box below under this video. Hope you guys have a fantastic day, happy shooting, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.